In early November, Germany was hit by the first episode of cold weather, and I immediately noticed the changes in my skin. Time to adapt my skincare for winter and the cold. But what is winter skin? It is not a medical term, the closest we have there is xerosis. It simply describes skin that is dry, dull, flaky, and more sensitive to actives like retinoids. In people of color, the term ashiness is often used, describing the skin that lost its glow and looks, well, Ashy. In order to understand how to best change your skincare routine for winter, let's first talk about the physiological changes in the skin during the colder months, then about some simple steps you can take to help prevent problems, and lastly, some tips for the different skin types right at the end. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. You probably know that the skin acts as a barrier, keeping good things like hydration in and bad things like bacteria or potential allergens out. In order to function that way, the outer layer of skin is built like a brick and mortar wall, with the skin cells being the bricks and the skin's lipids like ceramides, free fatty acids and cholesterol being the mortar in between. When it gets cold, the amount of epidermal lipids decreases, but here the data is inconclusive. Some studies show that especially the relative proportion of ceramide 1 decreases, while others report that all skin lipids decrease while the ratio between them stays the same. These differences might be explained by different age, sex and race of the subject studied. What has been shown for sure though is that skin lipids decline when it gets cold. Changes in the skin lipids are associated with several skin conditions like eczema, acne and atopic dermatitis, so even if these changes don't actually on their own increase transepidermal water loss and subsequently dehydration, they for sure make the skin barrier more susceptible to anything that offsets its balance. Or in short, less lipids mean the barrier isn't as strong as it is in the summer, so your skin gets dehydrated and irritated much quicker. Now that we know what happens in our skin, let's quickly look at a few non-skincare things we can do to counteract the effects. The first is to increase the humidity in your environment. Winter air has less moisture and when you turn on the heating, the air inside gets pretty dry too. If you don't want to spend money on a device like a humidifier, a simple tip is to put out small bowls of water, ideally in a place where you don't knock it over, and let that water evaporate over time. The second thing to do is to protect the skin from the cold when you go outdoors. The body parts that suffer the most are usually the cheeks and the hands because they are out unprotected and exposed to the wind. Speaking of wind, did you know that having wind blow over your skin decreases the actual temperature on the skin by up to 10 degrees? So bundle up with gloves, scarves you wrap around your face, or what is a good idea, wear a face mask when you are out and about. The last tip I want to mention is actually the hardest. Ditch the hot bath and long hot showers and opt for lukewarm quick washes instead. I know how good a long hot shower feels, but Think of it as cleaning the dishes. If you want to get the grease out of the pan more easily, you use hot water. If you rinse it in cold water, you need more dish soap for the same effect. Same is true for your skin. The hotter the shower, the more lipids are removed. And as they are already fewer than they were in summer, that can lead to dry, itchy limbs. While we're talking dish soap, Take a look at the products you are using in the shower, as shower gel can be pretty stripping, and consider switching to a shower cream or oil, or even one of these in-shower moisturizing products. If you don't moisturize in-shower, try to do it as quickly as possible after the shower, as it works best when your skin is still damp. Now let me talk you step by step through your skincare routine and suggest changes depending on your skin type. First, cleansing. Here I want you to take a look at two things, products and frequency. Your fresh and foamy gel cleansers should probably get packed away for summer, unless they are among the few really hydrating ones, and switched for milks and creams if your skin is normal to oily, or even balms and oils if your skin is on the dry side. More than texture though, it matters how they make your skin feel. If after you rinse them off, your skin feels calm and hydrated, you got the right one. If it feels tight or squeaky clean directly after cleansing, you need to look for a more hydrating version. I will share my personal winter skincare favorites in the description box. And then the cleansing frequency. You need to cleanse less 
than in summer. If your skin is normal to dry, you can probably skip the morning cleanse altogether. And if you're not wearing heavy layers of makeup, I don't think you need to double cleanse in the evenings either. As a rule of thumb, look how often you cleanse in the summer and then take at least one cleanse away. Unless you only cleanse once at night year round, in which case you should keep that up. As for cleansing brushes or other tools, skip them. Your best device are your fingers and the mechanical exfoliation these tools offer is probably too much for your skin in winter. Next, hydration. I tend to recommend the simplest routine possible as too many steps are confusing, but once I read somewhere, when you start to layer your clothes, it is time to layer hydration and I love that quote. As I mentioned before, the air around you is pretty dry, which means water evaporates easily from your skin. To counteract that, you need humectants to grab and hold the water, as well as ideally the water, no less in water, but as in damp skin, and then occlusives to seal that in. Occlusives come in the moisturizing step for the humectants and the damp skin. I tend to rely on my serum that I lay with hydrating toners. The toner dampens the skin and adds humectants, so I add it after every step. Cleanse, tone, serum, tone, moisturize. Take only a few seconds more if you use a spray toner like the Caudalie grape water. Last step, moisturize. Just kidding. The last step is always sunscreen, at least in the mornings, even in winter, but I'm not going into too much detail on that today as I have a playlist on the topic here. For your moisturizer, it is again a change in texture you will need, from gels to lotions and creams, if you're normal to oily, or if your skin is really dry to heavy creams and ointments. The richer the texture, the more occlusive are usually used, and as I said before, you will need those to seal in hydration. With the drop especially in ceramide, one that some studies have shown it might be a good idea to pick moisturizers with added ceramides to counteract that, but just to be clear, we don't know the ideal ratio of ceramides in face creams yet, or even if ceramide levels have dropped in your individual skin, so it could end up not having a beneficial effect. It won't have a worsening effect though, so I think it is worth giving a shot. If you don't feel like changing your moisturizer, adding a few drops of face oil before application will work as well, or you could apply a separate layer of face oil after moisturizing. Scorlane and jojoba oil work well on more oily skins, while sweet almond oil is a favorite among people with dry skin. What about exfoliation? In my experience, hydration is more important than exfoliation in the winter, and I recommend you do reduce the frequency of exfoliation or maybe stop altogether as long as it's cold outside. If you feel like you can't go completely without it, consider switching to gentle chemical exfoliants that offer additional hydration like lactic acid or even polyhydroxy acids. And if you suffer from keratosis pilaris, which tends to get worse in winter, look for products that have a high percentage of urea as that ingredient is both hydrating and at higher concentrations keratolytic. I use my foot cream on my upper arms and it works like a charm. And my retinoids? Retinoids, especially if you use prescription as acne treatment, are a year-round thing, but with your skin being more prone to irritation, you might need some adjustments in winter. If you feel your regular schedule is too much, you can either reduce the strength of the product, reduce the frequency you use it at, or try buffering. I have a video with all my tips for reducing irritation up here and I'm positive you will find a way to make it work. With these tips, you should be able to get through winter maintaining healthy and glowing skin. If there is anything you would like to add, please do so in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram, blog and Patreon account in the description box. See you soon. Bye!